Adopting a Healthier Diet Using the Social Cognitive Theory by Sabrina C. Nash. Many adults and children in the U.S. have poor dietary habits. Poor dietary habits fuel the obesity epidemic and increase one's risk of developing a chronic disease. The social cognitive theory allows nutrition educators to not only look at the problem, but to also consider the personal, behavioral, and environmental determinants that influence the individual's behavior. This picture diagram shows how the behavioral, personal, and environmental factors play a role in one's behavior whether it's behavioral factors like training and skills or personal factors like attitudes and expectations, the social cognitive theory says that they all play a role in influencing our behaviors. So once we know what the determinants, what the determinants are, we can better create a strategy or intervention to address the determinants that influence their decisions. Constructs are the building blocks of theory. Social cognitive theory consists of the following constructs. Outcome expectations, barriers, self-efficacy, behavioral capacity, self-regulation, observational learning, and reinforcement. In this case, we will be using the constructs of the social cognitive theory to inform and assist my client with overcoming barriers that prevent healthy eating. Meet Ashley. Ashley's mother brought her to my office for a complimentary nutrition consultation. I began by gathering information about Ashley, her demographics, her weight, age, and height, dietary behaviors, and her external influences, uh, such as peers and family members, via a brief survey. Once I finished gathering the information, I determined that Ashley's weight was in the 95th percentile for her age, and that she had several psychosocial determinants that are influencing her health behaviors, including coming from a low-income household and community where limited access to healthy foods. Her mother is also obese, so she's probably learning from watching some of her mother's habits. She is also permitted to do excessive snacking in between meals and consumes energy-dense foods and sugar-sweetened beverages like soda and juice with each of her meals and snacks. She also watches an excessive amount of TV where there are constant advertisements for food and snacks being advertised. After our initial consultation, Ashley and her mother came back to my office a week later for an intervention. It was important for me to engage Ashley's mother as well as Ashley because she will play a role in creating a healthy environment and modeling the healthy behaviors. We started this session by watching, by doing a picture activity called Why Fruits and Vegetables, which really gets Ashley and her mother to seeing the outcomes of healthy and non-healthful eating habits. We then watched a five minute video from the American Culinary Federation on nutrition, which really helps to drive home how easy it is to buy and eat healthful foods, as well as some specific benefits of eating them. We then did a quick tasty after school snack using items purchased from her neighborhood Aldi and corner store to show that it's easy, cheap, and accessible to eat healthy. I also encouraged Ashley to limit her sugar sweetened beverages to once a day and to replace beverages with water. I noted that a positive reinforcement can be a reward or a snack, a reward of a snack or dessert of her choice once a week. Lastly, I gave Ashley and her mom some tips for purchasing healthy foods, which included coupons and recipes that she could use when preparing meals and snacks via a pamphlet. By the end of our session, Ashley and her mother expressed confidence and excitement about making healthier choices. Here are my references and thank you.